So we'll go ahead and take the cover off. Okay, I've loosely installed the parts that were not present when we started here. So basically this is what it will look like when you take your cover off. You're just gonna remove the two pillar bolts, top and bottom. And then you're gonna remove this, the points plate. Once you take that center bolt out, on the back side of the advance unit, there's a taper. And there's also a pin in the end of the camshaft that locates with this slot. Well, when you've tightened that center bolt through that advance, it kind of forms, it, it, it's a fit to it because of it's a, it's a taper. So when you take the bolt out, this isn't just going to fall off in your hands. You have to pull it off of there because it's kind of a press fit. You're just gonna give it a little slide action and bang that against that bolt there and it'll pull this taper out of the end of the cam and that will remove the advance unit from the camshaft. There we go. Very nice, good crimp, good connection, totally protected. Once again, I really am a big fan of using conduit. It just makes for a much cleaner, nicer installation. So we'll go ahead and take the pipe off. And there's no gasket on here. Like I said this at the beginning of the video, this is a fresh, fresh rebuild. You can now see the pointer here and there's the line on the rotor. Incidentally, the line on the rotor coincides with the keyway on the crankshaft. And then we're gonna rotate the motor backwards while watching that mark. And there you can see the pointer is now lined up with the rotor. And that means we are at 38 degrees before top dead center and we're ready to put the magnet on. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and lightly install this. You don't want to tighten it down so that it won't move and you'll find out why in a second here. I want it just loose enough where I can turn this and see how it's moving now, but it's not so loose that it's flopping around. So the next thing we want to do is we want to introduce the trigger plate to the cover and our goal here is to have that red dot in the hole. But what you want to keep in mind is that you need some room for adjustment for timing purposes. So you basically want to center these two long slots in the hole that we're going to put the pillar bolts in. And once you get, get the bike running, it's a very good idea to go ahead and strobe time it. Okay, we got her all buttoned up. Gas tank's back on, everything's all hooked up. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get it fired up and then we'll show you how easy it is to strobe time it. So we'll get that hooked onto the plug wire. Okay, then we're just gonna hook up positive and negative on the battery. And what you have to do, basically we're just gonna be pointing this at this opening here where we have our pointer and our line that we discussed earlier. And what the other thing you wanna do is you wanna turn the throttle up and that will put the ignition into the advance mode. So basically you're not timing it at idle you want to see 2,500 or so RPM so that the ignition's in the advanced mode. All right, see it's flashing now. We're gonna crank up the throttle. There she is. Okay, you may have noticed that the line on the rotor was slightly to the right. So what you can do to fix that is to make sure it's dead nuts lined up. That's gonna be perfect timing. You're gonna go ahead and loosen these two pillar bolts. You'll see on here, there's some degree marks, very fine marks, and it says advance. So we need to advance it a little bit. So we're going to turn the trigger just a little bit that way. And then we're gonna lock these back down. Now you see the importance of doing the strobe timing at the end of the install 
uh, you want your timing to be spot on. You don't want it to be a few degrees advanced or retarded. Uh, you're going to get the optimum performance out of this rebuilt engine if your timing is spot on. And uh, that's all there is to it. Now, thanks for watching my uh, Pazon Tech Tip installation video. So the banana tanks, like many of our, our, our gas tanks, have slotted holes in the tabs. That's great. It makes it a lot easier when you're mounting because it gives you a little room for error. If you change your mind, you want to move your tank up a little hair, and it gives you a little adjustability. So like, even if you, uh, this is where you want it, but hey, maybe you're running your fuel lines and it's too tight, you can loosen the bolt, slide your tank up that quarter of an inch, and it can make a huge difference. Uh, I'm just gonna make a simple scribe mark in the middle of the slot. I can just it very lightly and it scratches right into the purple dicum. So I lower the lift so I can uh, make sure I'm centered over the backbone, keep this square uh, perpendicular to the backbone. So I'm just gonna go ahead and find my center punch mark. And there's no rush, so I'm just making sure like yeah, it's right where it should be. ahead and get one tap. So I've got the bolt, a washer, the tank, the leather washer, and then the threaded bung. Looks really nice. So the way Todd wanted this mounted in the rear is using, uh, again, one of these one inch diameter, a larger diameter a coped bung, and uh, this is again for 5 16 hardware, same size as the front. That cope is for a one inch tube, like handlebar, it's a perfect fit. But since this is about an inch and a half diameter, I'm gonna go ahead and grind down these, these wings a little bit, and I'm gonna have to just open that up uh, so it fits n nice and snug against that back, but I don't want a big air gap in there, it's just sloppy. I want a nice tight fit so I get a nice clean weld around the outside edge. I got that bung opened up so it fits the backbone really nicely. Uh, this part of the gas tank mounting is quite easy. I'm going to go ahead and wipe down the steel uh, bung and the backbone, clean it real quick. Got past the area I was thinking might be a problem because of the braze, no problem. Uh, you know, good, good clean preparation made for a nice easy weld onto the front. Got our hardware with our doubled up leather washers. Go ahead and start these bolts into the bungs. I think it looks, uh, looks great. Straight, holds gas, lets you ride your motorcycle down the road. Another job well done. That one's real stuck. You just kind of got to Hold your mouth just right. This rear rocker box is kind of a jigsaw puzzle. Once you get it just right and you're holding your mouth just right, she will come off. And now that we've broken it free, we should be able to use our ball end on there. So we went ahead and loosened that with the ball end. And we've got the other one. And since these are longer than the top ones, we can go ahead and take those out. You can see why I'm breaking these by hand because we probably have a bunch of corrosion on these too. And then she should come out like a so. Bada bang. Hear that noise? That means she broke free. It definitely makes a difference. Okay, oh, wait a minute, gang. We have neglected to remove our intake manifold. And then you're just gonna 
And she'll come right out just like that. And push rod tubes are coming off too. There she goes. In order to get the lifters out, you have to take these four fasteners here. And you'll see when we get one out, it's kind of a pin. Ah, look at that. And what that does, you'll see when I pull a lifter, there's a flat on the lifter. So this pin going in the hole is keeping the lifter from spinning around because if the lifter could spin around, the roller that goes against the cam, oh, well, that'd be a big problem. And if we were just doing some repair work and we were going to reuse these lifters, it's always a good idea to mark which one came out of which hole so they go back in the same place for wear patterns. Two pillar bolts out, and we're gonna have to find the darn plug for the ignition. And by wiggling the wire down here, I can see this is the pickup. And here is the plug for the pickup on the frame. So we'll go ahead and unplug that. Let's see there. Oh, we lost our special clip thingy. There we go. Now, the next thing we're going to need to take off is this cup that has the two little windows that goes through there and tells it when to spark. And this cup is attached to the end of one of the cams. I think we're ready to pull the cam cover. See, there is the end of the cam. Look at her. And if I remember correctly, most of these bolts are different lengths. All right, got them all out. Cam cover off, woo! Uh, we got a breather on there. That's not helping matters very much, is it? It really doesn't matter if we show you how the marks line up because we are going to be putting new cams in there and we're gonna show you how those marks line up when you're putting the new cams in. We are going to be putting a new gasket on here. All right, this part's gonna be really hard, watch. Oh boy, that was tough. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's the last one. Okay, all we gotta do now is clean up this mess because we're gonna be putting a new gasket on there after we put our new cams in. So let's get that done. 